So here I am just in this car with no brakes, barely any steering, and I can barely even see. What's going on guys? So thanks for watching. Today I'm gonna to switch it up a little bit, do something I don't normally do. Today I'm gonna to tell you the story of how I bought my 1954 Bel Air. If you guys are new to this channel, usually I do all sorts of cool coverage about you know exotic cars. I just bought an Aston Martin the other day. You can watch that video here, how I got that car. And yeah, um, I put out a video every Friday, so you guys definitely don't wanna miss those. In 2021, I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers and I need your help to do it. I would really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and it'd be pretty cool if you did, so thank you. So anyway, I didn't really like rehearse this story, I didn't really plan any of this, so as I'm telling it, I'm pretty sure some things are going to kind of come back that I haven't really remembered in like years. Uh, so basically, this was, I think this was the summer of 2011, I just graduated high school, and... I was at a friend's cousin's house and we were we were we were somewhere we weren't really supposed to be. It was getting kind of dark and he had this uh he had this barn on his property and he basically lived on the side of an old divided highway uh, out in Amish country. He kind of lived in like, you know, Lancaster area, kind of rural, lots of farms. So he had some livestock himself. Uh, he had some cows, chickens. So we were just in the barn kind of checking out, you know, what he had. And, you know, <laughs> saying hi to the cows and whatever. And um, again, it was getting dark. So we, we kind of needed flashlights. We're in this dude's barn, just kind of walking around in the dark. And we, we had these like poorly, you know, we had these terrible flashlights basically because you know on the smartphones they didn't really work all that well we're trying to get back outside you know there's uh on the other side on the upper level there were these big barn doors so it would have been easy just to go out there but i just happened to see something in the corner on my way out i'm just kind of like hey wait a minute what's uh what's over there we we're just kind of looking around trying to figure out what it was and you know i uh i shine my light on like the side of the the side of the quarter and I noticed it said Bel Air on it so I was like oh okay it looks like it's probably a Chevy Bel Air and then I start opening the door and I completely disregard the fact that I'm just like snooping around in this guy's car and he doesn't even know I'm in there and that's when you know we're kind of me, me and uh me and the guy I was with were just kind of like, you know, we we're kind of zoning out, just, you know, kind of obsessing over this thing, like, oh, look at this, it has these little, it has these crank windows, and, and, you know, once again, we're looking in this car, looking all around it, trying to figure out everything about it, and we just hear the barn door open, and, you know, I, I got a little scared, because I didn't know who it was at first, and uh, it turns out it was the owner of the car, but, you know, we were not in trouble or anything like that, but we thought we were. He just kind of walks up to me with like this little grin on his face. I, I guess maybe he could like hear us talking about it. Like maybe he heard like the enthusiasm behind it. So he just started walking up to me. He's looking at me. He's looking at the car. He's still smiling. And he's just like, you want to buy it? And I, uh, I, I had no idea how much he would want for, for such a thing. I was just kind of like, oh man, I can't afford it. I don't know, uh, prob probably probably not. And then he said, well, you can have it for five hundred dollars. I just kind of said, yeah, you know, give, uh, give me your number and uh, we'll we'll get it all figured out, and uh, I'll meet you back here at the end of the week. I didn't really tell my parents or anything what was going on. Cause I still lived at home at the time. I might have briefly mentioned it, like, you know, in passing to my dad. My dad was always a little more supportive about this stuff and, you know, me trying new things and whatever. And he was just kind of like, oh, that's a lot of work. You sure, you sure you're up for that? And, you know, me, me and my hair brain, I was just like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, just, you know, I, I just got to make it run again. And then, you know, do this, do that. Boom, car's done. And, you know, I, I had no idea what I was really in for, but... You know, I just knew that I wanted the car and I had this vision of 
me driving it once it was all done. And <laughs> yeah, Google search kind of got the best of me because here I am just looking at pictures of how this car was going to look when it was done. I just had it in my head. I had it visualized and basically nothing was going to talk me out of buying out, buying the car at this point. I still probably had $150 in my checking account, but it was the end of the week and I actually had to go to work later that day, but don't let me uh, get too ahead of myself. But uh, I go over to the guy's house, meet him just like I said I would. And um, actually Old Kill ended up towing the car home for me. It, it, took, uh, it took probably three or four people. We just, we, we put it in neutral and we just slid the car back out of the barn and no brakes, no nothing. This car must have, I, I know everybody says this with the, you know, the barn fine and the dust, but this car was pretty much, you know, covered in dust. It's covered in bird crap, you name it. It, there was some hay back where the, uh, the rear window was supposed to be. It looked like this car was just sitting in there for a long, long time. So we're walking around the car, still just going nuts over it. We're kind of taking inventory of what it has, what it's missing, all that stuff. The car had some fenders with it, but they're all dented up. It had a rusty hood. The quarters were shot. The rockers were shot. The rear quarters were shot. The tail pan was shot. The doors were shot. The, the, the car just needed everything. The glass was shot. It didn't even have a rear window, so at one point rain was probably getting in there. Um, it was, it, it was just a mess. It was everything an unrestored car would have been. It actually turned out that the car belonged to the state of Pennsylvania and it had some sort of official government use. And normally while government vehicles are pretty stripped down, this one was a Bel Air. And in 1954, you know, this was before the Impala came out. So the, the 54 Bel Air, that was like the top trim package, you know, it had the automatic, and it was also a state car. So who knows the actual history of that car? I think it was Department of Treasury or something like that. I have no clue who would have owned this car in 1954. But all I know is it sat on the original owner's yard since 1978. And then the person whose barn it was sitting in purchased it, I think sometime in the 90s. And it's pretty much been sitting there up until 2011, 2012, and I happened to bump into it. I said earlier, I didn't have any money in my account. Um, I actually asked a friend to lend me $500 to purchase the car because I knew that the next time I got paid, I'd be able to cover it. And that was the truth. And thankfully he lent me the money and I was able to buy the car. If you're watching it, thanks a lot, Greg. Without you, I probably wouldn't have had the thing. Um, so then Old Kill just says, all right, so you're going to get in the car and steer it, and I'm going to drag you down this hill. So here I am just in this car with no brakes, barely any steering, and I can barely even see, and we're just going downhill. And, you know, we laughed about it for a little bit, but the uh, Old Kill's like, yeah, man, that was a, uh, how'd your first drive feel? You know, we just kind of we drove it down this little hill down up into his trailer. And, um, I mean, it, it might've been like 50 to a hundred feet. So it was nothing crazy. But I think I mentioned earlier that I had to go to work that day. And just because, you know, we weren't really in a hurry. We're just, we're all just eyes all over this thing. Me, old kill, the guy that sold it to me, we're all just looking around the car and, you know, exchanging stories and, I hop in my car, leaving the property, old kills behind me with the truck and the trailer. I'm getting the call from my boss and he's like, dude, where are you? And I'm like, oh, I had to work today. Like, you know, in my head. And I can't remember even what I said. I think I said something like, oh yeah, there's like a terrible accident or something like that. I, I can't remember what nonsense I said and you know, this was only a high school Todd would be that bad at planning, but um, I basically said, all right, let's go drop this thing off at my parents' house. And then I pretty much have to go straight to work. Old Kill was just getting up the hill and we basically unloaded it, threw some parts in the basement and 
you know, that was that. Meanwhile, I think when I was flying over to my parents' house, I think I called my dad and I was just like, hey, uh, hey, I, uh, I, I bought something and it's coming over and he probably knew what I was buying. The next morning, I think it might have been a Saturday or a Sunday, I, I got up early because I honestly just really couldn't sleep and I wanted to go play with my car. So I just, I got up out of bed early and I'm outside looking at it and I could tell my parents are like, just, oh no, what did, what did he bring home? Look at this, look at this terrible, terrible mess that he brought home. <laughs> and we live, uh, to put some context to this, we live in like a traditional neighborhood that the houses aren't right up on each other, but if you're working on something in the yard, uh, if your neighbor has a deck and both of our neighbors did, you know, they could basically just sit on the deck and watch you work on this thing. And, you know, my parents, you know, their, their garage was for their cars, not mine. So I never really got to park this in the garage. It was always outside. There was this one neighbor that just became like increasingly intolerant of pretty much anything that we ever did. And we were worried that this neighbor was going to call the township and, you know, have the car forcefully removed because I didn't have the car registered yet. You know, I just had the title signed over to my name. I didn't do any registration yet because I knew that I was a ways away from ever making this thing run and drive legally. So... Uh, they had the full power to do that if they chose to, and I was worried it might happen. So my next mission was basically to make this car look like it wasn't an eyesore anymore. All the enthusiasts are going to cringe, but I spray painted it. I got this baby blue spray paint from Walmart, and I painted over rust. I painted over bad paint. I painted over dents. And, you know, I masked off the windows, so it didn't look completely atrocious. But from, you know, 30, 40 feet away, it looked like I, you know, made a huge stride in fixing the car. It actually looked nice. It was one color. This is where I guess all the fun really began, because when I purchased this car, I had no tools, no knowledge, little knowledge, not much. And, again, nowhere to work on it. So it didn't matter if it was snowing, didn't matter if it was raining. I was outside all the time trying to work on this car, trying to learn about it and just trying to, you know, make it run. And it, it didn't take too long. I had to rewire the entire car. Uh, no surprise there. But at the same time, I had to figure out how distributors worked because, you know, I'm 27 now. I'm figuring out just, you know, I'm just on Google and, you know, how to wire distributor, how to wire starter, you know, whatever. And eventually I had the thing rigged to some kind of switch and it was really crude. I had a battery like just, I think, wedged on like a toolbox and some bricks, you know, just to see what would happen. And one of the neighbors was outside and I just remember him looking at, I just remember him looking at the car and he's just, I think he was out there mowing his lawn or something like that. And he, he had a push mower and I remember he just stopped. He just stopped and he's just, he's just looking over there and you know, he, he's got like his, he's got like his hands like this, like, oh, let's see what's going to go down here. Let's see what's one of them. One of my friends gets in the car and another one's like, I think I'll watch from over here. <laughs> I just remember the first time just taking that car around the block. Every time we hit a bump, there was some kind of dirt or something that fell off of it just from whatever was sitting there and just caked in it. There was a, like a trail around the neighborhood that led back to that car just because of how much crap was just in there. There was like hay, just road debris from 40 years ago. You name it. But... Oh man, I will never forget that day, ever. I just remember the car shifting itself. I was like, wow, the transmission even works. This is crazy. And the speedometer worked, the odometer is rolling, it's putting miles on it. 
it, it felt like I was like resurrecting this old thing and it was just slowly coming back to life basically. So as I mentioned, I actually just started working full time. But what I didn't mention was I was working full time for a place that sold car parts. So every once in a while, there were some notable people that came in there and that actually led me to this. This is a signed autograph picture of my 1954 Bel Air signed by Chip Foose. And at the bottom it says Todd overhaul it. So this was also a cool motivating factor for me to get the car done. Cause I got a picture of my car completely unrestored signed by Chip Foose. So I hope you guys like this video. And once again, I would really appreciate it if you guys would like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. Turn the notifications on. I'll see you guys next week.